All right, hey guys, uh, welcome back to Crypto Art Australia. Uh, my name is Matt, this is Mitch, as you know. Um, today we're going to talk to you about um, Ethereum in particular. Um, in my last video, we did an analysis of, of, of Bitcoin and and with Mitch and I, we talked about a little bit about Ethereum in the video before that. So we're going to focus a little bit more on the fundamentals today and then touch on price later. Um, so have you got any comments on that, Mitch, about Ethereum? What's going on with Ethereum in the last few days? Uh, essentially, I think investors, traders, they're, they're gearing up for the hard fork that be happening around mid-January at the moment. So uh, pretty much the first month of the new year kicks it off yep. for the crypto space uh, big time, mm -hmm. especially with regards to uh, Ethereum. And if we just open up while you're talking about the hard fork, I've got Oliver Isaacs on Twitter. We've He's one of our followers. Yeah, we've retweeted uh, Oliver's tweet about, I'm bullish on Ethereum for the next 30 days. He's got a price target there, but he talks about this. Tend to agree with him there too. Yeah, about the price target, 200 uh, to 220. Definitely. Um, but he's mentioned that specifically regarding the fundamentals. Classic Vision hard fork 11th of Jan and Ethereum now a hard yeah. fork 12th of Jan and Constantinople fork 16th. So yeah. the, the 16th is the big one. Yeah. Um, but what do you see as in particular for the Ethereum network, the Ethereum community? What's the impact of this hard fork going think, to have on the stability of the coin? Yeah, well, I think... Mean, it's two things at play here, Matt. I think the one of the key things is the stability uh, of the Ether network, and uh, the, the second minor thing is uh, essentially with regards to the price of it. Um, so with regards to the stability, you know, like uh, since the cryptocurrency markets has evolved, like Ethereum now is the, the, they're not perceived as a lone soldier. It's no longer a, Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin anymore, mm. you know, it faces definitely a lot stiffer competition uh, than ever from like uh, blockchains such as Cardano and, and Zilliqa and, and others. Um, and I think one of the other key things is uh, with regards to that, Ethereum and Cardano and the likes, of, they've all seen their currencies lose almost uh, at 90 percent of their value over the past year mm -hmm. um however you know it doesn't change the fact that the hard forks tend to weaken the overall support mm. that a blockchain network attracts especially as the developers begin to pick sides and and the community migrate. starts yeah, putting, that's, yeah that's exactly right you know they tend to pick sides and uh migrate to the the work on the on the newer chains that form mm -hmm. and um you know with just the Give you an example of that. We've seen that uh, with regards to Bitcoin and Bit uh, and Bitcoin Cash, mm. which is now Bitcoin ABC, yeah, and, Bitcoin uh, Cash ABC and SB. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And we're starting to see that also impact on price as well, with the little yeah. pumps happening here and there. And you know, we'll talk a little bit later, but obviously, Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum are both leading the market at the moment. Yeah. And I, I think I think that's the the whole thing, Matt. Is that these hard forks and the, the new coins that spin out, that have spun out from Bitcoin, it, it does weaken the, uh, the currency's uh, long-term viability overall because you do get people within the uh, space working on the currencies mm. at the time choosing sides. Yeah. You know, do they, they stick with the, the, the new or do they stick with the, the original? And it comes down to their moral beliefs. It comes down to, you know, what they perceive to be long-term the best decision. So... Um, you know, it does put a split in the community, but we've got an article here, Mitch, Ethereum price analysis, well supported for another bull run. We'll focus more on the fundamentals first. I know that the, in the headline it says price here, but we'll focus more on the fundamentals first. I just talked about fundamentals. Yeah. <laughs> I've already talked about that. But just a little bit more is that, um, you know, it's also, it says here, the hard fork has promised to make Ethereum faster and much more cost effective. And That's the constant open think, hard fork. Out of the three forks, the actual um, the key fork that is about to happen is the uh, the, the key one for the whole uh, up, upgrade of it all is the constant tenopole fork, which is the, the third fork and the final fork. Uh, pretty much, essentially, all this is going to do is just uh, transition Ethereum's network from proof-of-work protocol to proof-of-stake. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, it, the article mentions here uh, it's it's a controversial hard fork, and that's because the the reward for the miners has decreased, obviously moving the proof of stake, but also the positive for the network is that it's increasing the network time and the speed of block time. Definitely. Um, so that's going to be a positive overall for people who use Ethereum, for developers, and for those who are working on Ethereum, um, um, but also for the community as a whole. So is there anything else you want to add about Ethereum, Mitch, that you think um, is going to affect the long-term price well, of Ethereum, given these hard forks that are occurring in January? Well, yeah, I mean, with, you know, for the... With, with regards to price, I think, so my opinion is short term there'll be a pump, mm. so I'm not quite sure if it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, buy the, buy the room, sell, sell, the, the news. sell the news, if yeah. it's going to be a pump. And was, In which case, buying now before. would be the, <laughs> the time to do it. So, um, but the other thing with, uh, with regards to predictions, you know, that's uh, it's very hard to actually come up with a long-term prediction for Ethereum. Hmm. Well, we saw um, that pump similar yeah, with the Ethereum uh, Classic, didn't yeah, we? Yes. You know, when when they were hitting Coinbase Pro, and there was a massive fifty percent pump or whatever, and then it was sold the news, and now they're at five dollars US. So, but this is different because we're talking here about, about a hard fork. Yeah, yeah. About a hard fork, hmm. yeah, I don't think that's really <laughs> a good example, but uh, yeah, they're, they're just generally. But I'm saying that's an example of a buy the rumor, sell the news yes, event. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, and I think. At the moment, uh, while we've got these exchanges and a lot of these exchanges aren't very liquid, it makes it a lot easier for uh, for market manipulators to actually pump up the price. Okay. What about long term? What about long term? So, uh, so start with short term first. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> short term, we can expect to see some significant volatility. Some market will be, you know, exactly what I said before, to jump on any new coin that is born out of the free upcoming forks. Um, you know, for example, we've seen uh, the Bitcoin forks have historically led to minor jump, jumps in the price of BTC. Of course, a little bit of the value of the chain actually belonged to the Bitcoin network that was essentially split into the, mm-hmm. the newly forked chain. So when this happened, we actually seen, uh, back, it was back in July 2017, actually uh, when Bitcoin Cash forked from the Bitcoin network, actually seen the price of Bitcoin went down about 5%. So yeah. it went from 2800 down to about 2650 mm-hmm. back then in July 2017. Um, so it does, you know, it does bode well for pretty much the, for the uh, new coins that will emerge from the Ethereum hard forks. Um, but with regards to price, it will make it a lot harder uh, for Ethereum pretty much to claim the number two spot from XRP at the moment. Mm, yeah, who have got their own developments yes. happening, big partnerships they're making. Yeah, so, exactly you know, right. whether you're for the community or against, you know, you can't argue that they've got potential. So, all right, good. So we've talked a little bit about fundamentals. Is there anything else you want to add or can we move on to think, price? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to move on to price. Okay. So there, I think there was one more thing, Mitch, that you wanted to mention, talk about just before we moved on to price. Yeah, so it's, as we're aware, so Ethereum's in a, just a transition phase at the moment um, uh, with all these hard forks taking place. I think one of the key things is uh, is to keep a careful, uh, watchful eye on is, is, is whether or not uh, Ethereum will remain the dominant blockchain for dApps mm-hmm. over the coming months. So yeah. And you've got we'll, competing chains like yes. EOS and NEO and yeah, Cardano yeah, and whatever. Yeah. You've got a dark horse, so you've got a fear and classic. Yeah. So, will uh, DAP switch over the uh, fear and classic yep. chain? Yeah. It's, it's something to watch for. So I think yep. I think the key the key thing here is to actually watch a fear and classic price. If if you are uh, focused on price, actually, will the uh, essentially pump in the Ethereum price over the coming weeks? Affect the uh, yeah, yeah. Affect the yeah. overall increase for Ethereum yeah. Classic. Yeah, too. that's yeah. it. The demand for it. Yeah. So that's that's probably the last point. Okay. Yeah. About. Good. So we're going to do a bit of a technical analysis now, Mitchell. You got any questions for me? Um, obviously, we've done a few videos over the last few weeks. 
Um, and now that we've covered the fundamentals, we wanted to do quickly touch on price um, and the charts. So, yeah, so pretty much, Matt. So, where do you see the Bitcoin price short term? Well, um, just in answer to that, I'm zooming in here looking at the chart because I think it's important to see a previous video. Um, I identified a head and shoulders pattern in the daily charts on Coinbase for Bitcoin. You can see that. Um, you know, it's had a little, it's a massive drop, massive drop here over the last few months. And then of course we had a little bit of a short term pump and then a drop again, and then a little bit of a pump. And now we're seeing more consolidation. So we're seeing the same pattern play out, but this time I think it's a little bit different because this is the right shoulder forming. And typically the right shoulder forms a similar distance to where the left shoulder forms. And so I can see that, you know, we could drop another couple of hundred dollars in the next few days maybe 3,500, that's my opinion. That's one scenario. Doesn't mean you go out and you buy a Bitcoin at 3,500. You've got to do your own research. But um, I think- Well, it depends on the sentiment in the market yeah. at the moment. You know, we might you know get a it could turn before then. Yeah, hacks that's right. Some good news, some bad it's... news. For example, back, you know, they've just delayed their uh, futures exchange. So, you know, um, anything could happen. But I see this as a more of a bullish pattern. Because you've got this movement in a downward consolidation grinding against exponential resistance, it's going to wear out very soon. And I think we're just resetting the RSI, we're resetting the MACD. Once we've done that, you'll see a move up, I think, in the next month, and probably our target would be 5,000. You know, you can't say that there's going to be a massive pump because we've seen this immense drop. Um, you could see a big, big pump in relative terms, but in, in comparison to the rest of the market over the last four months, it's kind of insignificant. It's still opportunity to make money. It's still an opportunity to short, uh, to short the market once it gets up to those levels. But um, it's just, I, I just see with, that we're still in a downtrend and nothing's changed yet. So um, it could go either way, but that's probably the most likely scenario at this point. It's in the agree with you on that one. Yeah. Any thoughts? No, I think we touched on it before. Yeah. I think last episode about a week ago, mm. I actually talked about the there's a lot of significant resistant levels in between that that 4K USD to to six six thousand three hundred USD. Um, so a lot of hurdles that the price needs to. On Bitcoin, yeah. 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 Short term, there's a lot of hurdles that the price needs to, to overcome. Then. Absolutely. Uh, there. Um, but on a positive note, there is a lot of uh, good news that we expect uh, coming out in the crypto uh, sector with regards to uh, uh, backed and mm -hmm. um, the, the ETF. Yep, which has uh, just been delayed by a few days, and people see that as backed. Been yeah, delayed by a few days. backed's been delayed by a few days, but really that's insignificant because it's going to launch, it's going to happen, and whether it's a few days or a few weeks. Um, you know, okay, there may be more downside, but really. So, Max, me, my question is, Matt, is that, you know, is that the market's already priced in at the moment? Is this 4,000 USD at the moment? Have, have the market's already priced in backed? That, that, that's, that's my question. Hmm. Um, or. I seem to think they have. Yeah, that's well, my can, own question, yeah. but, but. I seem to think they have, and uh, that, that's why I've truly do think that we uh, or is it a, a strategic move by those institutions you know, not putting the tinfoil hat on but um, you know the delay of this inevitable event happening is just an opportunity for those big players to, to buy it lower yeah, you know I can't yeah, yeah that's, I mean, that's, that's one we might need to ask Tom Leon yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with regards to that, that's not making a joke I think it's I think it's so we need to ask the, the institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Ethereum, we just wanted to touch on Ethereum. You got any thoughts on Ethereum, Mitch? You know, looking at the monthly chart, you know, um, essentially now we're seeing it, this was a red candle. Now it's turned green. You can see that we're moving up slowly. Um, and this month, the starting candle for this month has turned green. So we're in more of a reversal, would you say, for Ethereum? Definitely a reversal. At the, at the moment. moment. And obviously, that's, a, that's correlated to Bitcoin. But I think given that we, like we discussed with the, the hard fork, 
you know, that's going to have an impact on price. Like we, yeah, I think it's just with regards to the, the proof of work, uh, going from the proof of work protocol, the proof of stake, it creates a bullish sentiment at the moment mm-hmm. uh, for the currency. There's, there's some exciting news surrounding it. So yep. I just hope that the, uh, the currency doesn't get sold down once the, the forks happen, that's all. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you can see that, you know, we're sort of talking out in some of these. Because we, we have seen that before, Matt, as, as I elaborated before. Mm with uh, other currencies, with yep. uh, Bitcoin Cash yep. and with buy the, Bitcoin. Buy the news, and sell the news, yeah. Uh, the good thing, I guess the good thing, it, we're not looking at Bitcoin Cash chart, but, um, you know, Bitcoin Cash has been severely destroyed in the market, you know, given, and also given the hard forks that have occurred. But we're now seeing it pick up. Every pump we're seeing it lead with Ethereum. So, I, you know, it, it doesn't always happen the way you think it will. You know, you never know what the market's going to do. You just have to prepare for every possible scenario. And if you're invested in Ethereum, then it's just you're looking at the charts. Yes, you take you look at the news, but in the, at the end of the day, the charts tell you what's going to happen. Um, if it's oversold, it's time to buy. If it's overbought, it's time to sell. That kind of thing. So selling at the top and buying at the bottom, that's what you try and do. You can never pick it, but if you do your research and you do your analysis, then you can give yourself a better idea of what's going to happen. So... You know, do your research. We're not financial advisors, but um, certainly there's some big things happening for Ethereum and there's some big things happening for Bitcoin as well um, coming in the next couple of weeks, one way or the other. Uh, it'd be actually interesting too, Matt, just one final point, uh, just touching on the price aspect of uh, the crypto market. It's actually yeah. be interesting to actually watch uh, whether it's po- this positive sentiment within the Ethereum space at the moment does actually live up that uh, does actually lift up the other altcoins mm-hmm. with regards yep. to the price. Yep. If they get a, a increase, they mm-hmm. actually ride the wave of um, the, uh, the the bullishness of uh, Ethereum at the moment. Well, you can it see... Might actually, it might essentially in turn actually lift up the mood of the market. Yeah, and you can see some of these other altcoins. We won't go into the charts, but you can see some of the other altcoins did follow Ethereum's mini pump today. You know, Ethereum went up by something like 8% so far. Um, today and other altcoins are following six, seven, eight percent. So they're following the leader, really, and the leader at the moment is Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash as well. So I think this is a taste of what's to come. If Ethereum continues on an upward trajectory, these all other altcoins will will typically trail behind. Yeah, maybe not in the same um, amount as Ethereum, yeah, but the same velocity. Yeah, but it but, will. Yeah, but they will go up. Ten, they will tend to go up. And, you know, Bitcoin is still the leader of the market, but it, the question is whether they're going to split more from the trajectory of Bitcoin in terms of price movement or whether they're going to continue to follow Bitcoin like they've always done. Yep. That, that's an interesting point that we will see I what think, happens. I, I think that will happen, essentially, as, as the market matures and mm-hmm. investors and traders uh, actually, essentially, actually educate themselves on Yep. the particular cryptocurrencies yep. um, on, on what's actually happening, the the use case and the, the utility of each currency that's going to essentially decouple the currencies from, uh, the, the, sorry, it's going to essentially decouple the altcoins from yep. the price of Bitcoin. Decoupling was the word I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we'll leave it there, Mitch. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so um, thanks again, Mitch, for your analysis. And, and my name is Matt. This is Mitch, and we're Crypto Art Australia. Good to um, put out another video. And in the coming days and coming weeks, we'll put out some more videos on, on what's trending and topics in Bitcoin that we can um, give you some more information about. Okay, thank you. Cheers.